25, 30 level of building, you can see right round, right? The many roofs have these solar panels. But when you see, when you go outside, outskirts, this facility, this has not gone into the normal people. And their roofs also, there's many, I mean, a lot of solar power comes to the roof and that's wasted. But when you ask them, I know because I move with them, what they say is, there's no system for them to use solar power. But we know that the people who know the technology, they can say, and for that, all these organizations must see few authorities. That is, say, if a final bottom level consumer needs uh, uh, their roof to be used for their day-to-day -day works, only for a little uh, number of lights, maybe not air conditioned, and for them to have their domestic pump get it, uh, energized. For that, for them to use it, the system is not geared. When I say, why, what I say system, it is, I think, the Ceylon Electricity Board should play a very important role. They must coordinate with the consumer and the, uh, the bank and the developer, whoever initiating that there are so many people. Then finally for the consumer, when they, when they are paying 2,000, 3,000, maybe some people paying 1,000, you fix a solar panel and uh, get this uh, energy serving system to the grassroots level. There are 22 million out of that maybe 15 million is getting into that. But the industry people, we have our own issues. Because certain areas we can't use solar unless it's a per permanent buildings. But maybe there are certain techniques might come where we could use our heavy machinery, our equipment with the solar. Right. But that is, the, there are so many technical people involved, professionals involved, so that they can always read and see what is happening in the world and adopt. But the small scale, not a undeveloped, I mean, the, uh, simply say poor or, you know, the village people, this technology should go to the village. Then only it means something. It saves country power and we don't want more thermal power or anything and disturb the air. So solar power itself is, will cover about 40-50% of our energy requirement and also whether we like it or not, we all must get adjusted to sort of a more be with the nature. If you, are, if you can be with the nature, it's good for all of us health and good for the children's health, right? Otherwise, very soon, there will be a day all primary schools also go to be air conditioned. Because these children coming in the school where everything is air conditioned. They may ask for this, and this is happening now. That's why I started with the... the one of the very top uh, the leaders, I mean, the, in the system, the commander's office, today where we stand. So there is not much period, 40 years, but we have to change this uh, use of uh, energy resources. That is, I think, very timely that you all have organized this. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And Mr. Gunathilke, if I may further add on to uh, what you are saying, are you in, in a way also advocating the, the uh, mandatory uh, you know, kind of uh, guidelines for the upcoming, for example, the residential areas or resident uh, welfare, uh, RWAs, you know, because these kind of uh, uh, bodies are very, very proactive as, as I can see, we come from India and we see that uh, uh, nowadays, you know, there is uh, from the municipality, they don't get a occupational certificate till they have a few of the uh, you know these kind of measures for example rooftop like the society the apartment where i stay you know we have a huge rooftop in our uh, society similarly the rainwater har uh, harvesting you know these are the measures which are becoming increasingly mandatory in the new residential uh, areas so in some way are you uh, also advocating that this is the step which government should take uh, no when you use the word mandatory not in sri lanka there's no. That's what I said. The, the, uh, I feel the initiative 
shall be taken by the Ceylon Electricity Board. Because they have an issue. They have, a, uh, I think, the uh, uh, obligation to see all the people are comfortable with their energy. So that if they can't find the thermal power, I mean the furnace oil, if they can't find the coal uh, to import because we are dependent on all that, then this is the most uh, viable uh, thing for this country, the small scale people. So that if they see, they are, all, all village level people are very cooperative and uh, definitely, but there is no, if the, the authority must make CEB, right, to go there and go to the doorstep, get the uh, forms filled and for them to sign, go to the bank, make tri-party agreement or something and for them to pay. Then only it works. But if, so your advertisements, whatever the party is doing, the seminars we have, but the, uh, now that the, to a great extent because of those, they have an idea, okay, solar power, we can reduce our electricity bill and all. But the regulatory body must put their foot and go and at the doorstep. Sure. And if the government will make mandatory that, okay, this is CEB, uh, they must use every house. Automatically, your problem is solved. So moving forward now, uh, I think since you brought the word of a regulatory authority, you know, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Namita Kumar Singhe, he's a veteran of the industry and director general with Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka. Uh, Mr. Namita, now, uh, having heard, you know, what all is required for an economy like Sri Lanka, you know, and uh, uh, most importantly, how soon it is required, because I think there is no discussion about the, the, the manner in which this adoption of renewables needs to be accelerated also. So as a director general, you are on a top position of Public Utilities Commission. So what are your views that what and how this bilateral partnership can bring global solutions for the rescue of uh, Sri Lanka and for the betterment of uh, a power scenario in Sri Lanka? Uh, thank you. You know, I think uh, I thought of taking you 25 years back into telecom sector. Now, 25 years back, people had to wait several years to get a landline. But around that time, the technology has changed from land phones to mobiles, from analog to digital. With that, the Sri Lankan telecom sector has changed the structure from a government mon monopoly to a competitive industry. So with this change of technology, you need to change the market structures, you need to change uh, the business models, you need to bring in uh, bilateral and other partnerships. So sure. the telecom sector in Sri Lanka had a lot of partnerships with international uh, players and everybody came into Sri Lanka and set up so many companies and so many international partnerships, bilateral partnerships are there in the telecom sector right now. And from a wait of 10 years to get a telephone, we suddenly end up with more telephones than the population within a couple of decades. So we have moved from scarcity of telephones to abundance. What happened? Only the technology has changed. Due to that, the market structure has changed. All the bilateral and other partnerships came in, investments came in, and we moved from scarcity to abundance quickly. And now in the electricity sector, now we have the scarcity right now. We all face Sri Lankans and India also, I think, to a certain extent, that is there. But the same thing what has happened in the telecom sector is happening in the electricity sector. That is the change from the fossil fuels to uh, renewable energy, the intermittent renewable energy, solar, wind, and other sources. So with that change, the same kind of changes in the markets same type of changes in the partnerships, same type of changes in the investment should come in. So without these changes, I don't think uh, we can move forward. The first thing, the technology has come in. It is proven. Now it has been uh, executed all over the world. So everybody is in a transition, so all the countries. So I think India has moved a lot in that area yes. since 2015. 
and they are in uh, they are talking in gigawatts of solar and gigawatts of wind so uh, the market structures have changed and the indian uh, i think from 1st of april you are into fully uh, market oriented electricity sector so like that the sri lankan uh, electricity sector should also change and the bilateral partnership should come in and we have to open the doors for bilateral and other partnerships technology partnerships and the technology should come in and that change needs to happen soon to ensure that we move from scarcity to abundance very true resources are available bandwidth was there even 100 years ago but no one nobody had the technology has that but solar has been there for many millennia from the start of the world but no technology was there to harness it and convert it into electricity now the technology has come in same as in the wind so with this technology change definitely market should change to accommodate the uh, technology and with that you can have all these bilateral partnership investments uh, and uh, so on and so forth so this change we are expecting soon uh, to move from this currently experiencing scarcity to abundance because the resource is abundance and we can move into that so uh, considering this change i think uh, we are looking at uh, lot of bilateral and other partnerships technology partnerships financial partnerships